Greetings everyone, welcome back to RimWorld Ye Olde Knights. In today's episode, there's not too much going on in our Ye Olde Keep. We're disassembling some mechanoids, we have a birthday party or two going on, it's a pretty calm and rainy day for the most part. But truly this is the reason we fight, isn't it? For freedom, the freedom to play the harp and sit around the table eating some stew and drinking some ale. This is truly what we want in this world. One of the first things I decided to do today was go ahead and start researching animal armor. And speaking of animals, our turkeys finally started laying some eggs. No longer we have to use onions and potatoes and just the limited vegetables and meats on this map. We can finally use some eggs in our stew. Or we could boil them or scramble them or I don't know, we'll get creative. But oh how I wish eggs were the worst of our troubles. Unfortunately, just after this though, we had a psychic droner from a mech hive nearby that was going to be creating, well, a psychic drone that would drive us all crazy. For the moment though, I did decide to ignore the psychic droner and just do some work around the keep as we had to lay some nice flooring in our throne room. But then came a threat that I could no longer ignore. The mech cluster that dropped last episode had an auto mortar that had woken up and was very unhappy with us, so it began firing at us. But thank the gods though, our medieval mutton heads actually had their very own mortars from the siege we stomped out an episode or two ago. The only problem was the incinerary shells we were using I thought might do a little bit of damage to the mechs at the very least, maybe kind of light them on fire or damage them slightly or something, but apparently not. Apparently they don't do anything to mechs, so it was kind of a waste of time firing those, but at least it distracted them, I suppose. Well, the battle raged on though for a little while. After we defeated the onslaught of mechs coming through the murder hallway, we continued firing at the others. But the mechanoids got a really good shot in on us and destroyed all our mortar shells and almost killed Brex. It was at this point I realized this was no ordinary mech cluster, this was a mega mech cluster. Well, not really, it was just really tough to take out from a distance, so King George had an idea to move a catapult down and try to hide behind some mountains to fire at them. Unfortunately in doing so, his horse took a lot of damage, but that's okay, we'll repay it for its service later. Our knight Lumi came down to assist the king in this battle while reinforcements arrived, and we also decided to send Shark around the other side to try and flank them with some grenades. Shark did manage to blow up one of the massive turrets, but in doing so the other one downed him and he lay there bleeding on the ground. Lumi returned home and was replaced by Lagua, who decided to protect the king the best he could with a feral rifle that he had acquired. Newton, riding a white horse equipped with Shark's grenades, destroyed another of the turrets and also began to save Shark. Lagua was also gravely injured in battle and nearly gave his life to defend the king. With Lagua gravely injured and King George somewhat injured as well, we decided to allow the Queen and Gal Ro to take their places and finish off the mech hive. To which they quickly did. A little bit later though, Shark had been lying on the ground bleeding, Newton had carried him as far as Newton could. Uh, the king found him and began tending to his wounds. When the king was exhausted of doing so, the queen took over and began tending to him. And I know what you're wondering, how are they tending to his wounds without medicine? Well, you silly person, they're shoving rocks into them. Very sanitary. We managed to get everyone back at home though, alive, that part's very important thankfully, and we began tending to their wounds with some actual herbal medicine. But it wasn't just the people that needed saving, Stallion One, the king's horse that he rode in on and that got blasted. We would not forget you Stallion One, we carried Stallion One all the way back to our stables and he would be rewarded later on. I am aware I already said that earlier, but you know, it's, it's less for you guys and more of a reminder for me. Hey, don't forget to reward Stallion One, he's a good old boy. Maybe we'll give him a bite of cheese or stew or something, I, I mean he is a horse. But thankfully now that all the fighting was done, we could go back to working on our throne room. Our first order of business was to build two thrones next to the God King throne. One for the Queen and maybe one for a loyal advisor or someone of that stature. This role would be reserved for someone who has shown true bravery and resilience and all these other fantastic and nice words that I just can't seem to think of at this time. 
After the thrones were built and the throne room was somewhat completed, I decided that we would go ahead and give this position to Lagua. Lagua gave nearly his life out there on the battlefield to protect the king. He truly deserves this. The king held an honorary knighting ceremony and then Lagua began to put on his armor. I think I'm going to call this role the Silver Knight, so he's going to be something of a war master, I suppose, and kind of like a king's guard advisor, that kind of thing. I'm not exactly sure what to call it just yet, but I'm going to go with Silver Knight for now. And might I just say the three of them look beautiful on their thrones. It is truly a sight to behold. Now we also have someone else to reward though. I began working on a little bit of a gift for Stallion 1, which unfortunately we would have to hold off on because we were now being raided. It was a group of filthy freaking mechs dropping in scattered all around the area. By this point in this series, I mean anymore all we seem to fight are mechs. Nobody else seems to want to tangle with us, but that's okay. We'll send these inbred mechanoids to hell. But you know the drill by now with this murder hallway, it's extremely effective. Uh, they stepped on pretty well all the traps, and I don't even think one of them made it out to the end to get fired upon by our knights. Now that that's over with though, we have a lot, and I mean a lot of turkeys. We have quite a few too many turkeys, so many in fact, I decided that we would go ahead and cut their heads off and start boiling them in some nice weak stew. We sent in our Black Knight Christina to go ahead and start chopping off turkey heads left and right and we'd get working on that stew as previously mentioned. I, I know I already said that about the stew, I guess I'm just so excited about it, who knows. In less exciting news though, the Queen has an infection in her left foot from tangling with those filthy inbred robots. That's alright though, we would give her the best medicine that we could. Now, everyone was pretty distraught about the Queen having an infection, so to try and keep spirits high, we had a big old drum party right there in the throne room. Everybody was jumping and dancing and hopping and skipping and other things that sound like words you might do when you're dancing. Anyhow, everyone danced their little asses off in their armor and whatnot. We even allowed the slaves to join in on it. And then everyone said that it was a heck of a lot of fun, so I would call that a success. And now finally, we had awarded Lagua his silver armor for his triumph in battle and his service to the crown and whatnot. But we had Stallion 1 who also served the king by getting shot at and it was finally time for the reward of Stallion 1. So we gave Stallion 1 some nice armor and we also named him Bishop. From henceforth, I'm going to attempt to give all of our animals some armor like this as well. Then, of course, though, after we'd done that with Stallion 1, we had a psychic ship fall from nearby, because there's always a psychic ship falling here. We'll have to deal with that psychic ship at some point, but I do have some good news while we're waiting on that. The Queen developed immunity against her infection, thank God, so she will live to see another day. To celebrate the occasion of the Queen being able to continue living her life without, well, dying, we decided to go ahead and dig out right next to the throne room and create a brand new bedroom for the royal couple. We would give the new bedroom the finest sandstone tiles and the nice smoothest of walls that we possibly could. We would even build two very gorgeous bookshelves that are currently being worked on for the king and queen to read their nice books and we also built a warm, nice fireplace. It can get quite chilly here at Rats Mountain during the winter months. We also held a party in the Great Hall to celebrate the defeat of the machines, the holiday we created the first time that we ever beat the shit out of mechanoids, and ah, I just remember those times. Good times. To also celebrate, we decided to go beat the shit out of that psychic ship. We recently took a poll on the channel where I asked you guys if it's okay to use modern weapons. Now the majority of you said yes, and then around about 30% said no. So I am going to use them still because of that, but I am going to try to use more medieval tactics and weapons as you'll see. To start off this battle, I'm going to use grenades to attack these lancers, but our black knights are only going to be using medieval melee style weapons to fight them. So they came at the scythers bashing in their heads with their massive hammers while Weaves tried to poke through their armor with his sword. During that time while the Black Knights were beating the shit out of them, the others were stabbing our nobility in the sides and poking them in the ribs with their little sword hands and whatever they have there. 
Luckily, though, our Black Knights came to reinforce our ranks. Unfortunately, one of our Black Knights had went solo trying to beat the shit out of a Lancer, and the Lancer actually got the better of her and downed her. Now, she wasn't dead, thank the gods, but the other Black Knights had to come in and save her. The other three Black Knights made very quick work of that puny little Lancer, and then, after defeating the last Mechanoid, the only thing left was the ship. So, two of our Black Knights whipped out their chain shotguns since the battle was over and started pounding on the ship, until ultimately it fell to dust. We threw Christina, the Black Knight, over our shoulder and started carrying her all the way back to the ye old keep so we could put her in a hospital bed and start tending to her wounds so she wouldn't bleed to death. Brex and Queen Busto herself even began tending to the Black Knight's wounds. It's probably also worth mentioning that we had a massive group of man-hunting monkeys that had entered the area during this time, but I just set everyone to an area so they would stay within the keep, and then the monkeys basically all died on our cow traps and other traps we had laid. And then the monkeys that didn't actually die on the traps that were somehow still clinging to life were met with Queen Busto and her trusty sword and rifle. Not today, monkeys. Not today. The battle must have really done quite the number on our Black Knight Shark. He ended up, um, well, he ended up going catatonic, so I don't know if he just had a fit or what, but apparently he's bedridden now, and he's not going to be fighting for a little while. We also decided that it was finally time to go and deal with that pesky psychic droner because it was driving all of us insane, so we would go and destroy that as soon as possible. But before we even had the chance to form a caravan to go destroy the Psychic Droner, we had a bunch of ferals dropping in and transport pods separately all around the territory who were coming to try and tickle our fannies. But I was in no mood to let them and their filthy slug monster thing try and tickle my fanny, so we all gathered around the embrasures to shoot at them. But luckily for us, they all pretty well died in the murder hallway and the other ones were cowards and ran away. Thankfully, now that the inbred ferals, they probably really are inbred, unlike the mechanoids who can't breed, were done, we could go ahead and continue forming our caravan, though, to go attack the psychic droner. We giddied on up onto our muffalo and onto our horses, and we began the trek northeast to that psychic droner, as per mentioned a moment ago. Shortly after we arrived at the area with the psychic droner, the queen said not a word. Everyone sat on their horses and she gave them all a solemn, silent stare. And somehow they knew exactly what battle formation to do. And by battle formation, I mean throw grenades at everything until something explodes and everything is dead except for us. But with some time and a few good place grenades later, the psychic droner was no more and we could return home. Ah, home, where the rats are breeding in the hallways, the wine is strong, the hall is warm and beautiful, I suppose. I don't know, I just wanted to show you the rats breeding, to be honest with you. Anyhow, though, we ended up having a marriage anniversary for the king and for the queen Busto. Uh, it was actually kind of a depressing little party. Um, I just seen George drinking a beer at the table by himself. Not many people came. Hmm, don't know what's going on there. Some time later, I noticed that our food storage was getting a tiny bit low, and also though, I'd really like to mount some thrumbo heads on our walls, so we went on a bit of a thrumbo hunt. On horseback, no less, this time we did not cheese them and let them come through the murder hall and shoot at them, we actually went hunting for them. You're welcome. The massive white beast chased us throughout the woods, but inevitably their downfall was, well, inevitable, and we ended up killing all three of them. The third lay there on the ground, kicking and bucking its horn, and George came over with his sword and put a stop to it. It was very necessary, though, because now we could make some thrumbo stew with some turkey eggs and potatoes. And speaking of turkeys, I've named them all so far after Game of Thrones characters. Spoiler alert, um, we're giving them a bit of the Red Wedding treatment. If you don't know what that means and you're going to watch the show, I'm sorry, I might have just ruined something for you. But that's alright though, because we're going to have us a bit of a ye olde Thanksgiving dinner with well, lots of turkeys and turkey eggs and things of that sort, of course. 
But guys, I am going to go ahead and call this episode 9 of Ye Old Nights. Thank you guys so much for watching. This, I want to say personally, has probably been one of my favorite episodes. I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Um, this one is a bit longer. We're going over 15 minutes in this one. I'm going to try to keep most episodes from here on out around about this length. Maybe a little longer, maybe a little bit shorter. Somewhere around about the 12 to 15 minute mark, just depending on how much time I had. This one's coming out pretty late. Um, I mean, compared to how fast the others have been coming out. I'm trying to pump them out a lot. Going through a lot right now in my uh, actual, real, personal life. So, <laughs> it's, it's kind of slowing me down. Work, things like that. So, I apologize if things are a little bit slow. But, I'm doing the best I can. And, you know, just trying to get them out to you guys when I can. Um, but I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate the support on the channel and the support on this series. Um, I apologize to everyone in the poll who doesn't want us to use modern weapons. I'm going to try to do a mix, like I said, of like medieval and modern weapons. You may, Maybe the Black Knights are going to use medieval weapons more often, um, you know, and that sort of thing than everyone else. So we'll try and keep, uh, keep doing that, though. But thank you guys so much for watching once again. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.